OMG. Hello, everybody. I'm here in Bryant Park today in Midtown New York City, USA world. I'm going to be doing a tour of this little park here that a lot of people don't know about. Um, I'm actually in front of this big old statue, which I'll talk about in a second before I start. If you guys have watched any of these videos, do me a favor, check out the Patreon. That's a huge help. That's the reason I'm able to do these things. It's a huge, huge help. Thank you guys so much of those of you guys who do participate. Also, um, you know, like the video. <laughs> You're going to like it anyway. Give it a little thumbs up. Uh, subscribe. That helps a, a ton if you like the video. Uh, that's all the business, I promise. <laughs> but, uh, you know, before we start the video, Stewie, how you doing? Doing good. You're doing good. You're doing good, man? What, what's new with you? Nothing much. Grinding, just uh, getting ready for uh, the winter again. Yeah, the winter is coming, baby, to quote uh, the Game of Thrones wise men of Game of Thrones, but, uh, which I just started watching, by the way. Have you ever seen that? I have not. Pretty, pretty, uh, pretty good. All right, I'm, I'm digressing. We're going to start this tour. Um, what do you think, Stewie? Should we do this? Let's do it. Let's do it, baby. All right, I'm leaving the statue here of William Cullen Bryant. That's who the namesake of this park is. Uh, William Cullen Bryant was famous for uh, writing the, uh, well, writing the op-ed kind of, the editorial in 1844 that led to the creation of Central Park. Now, in 1811, the um, the, the grid plan of New York was laid. Uh, I've talked about that in um, just about every video. It's super important. You got to look this up. It's one of the most important things that's ever happened in New York. The actual grid plan is what kind of basically laid out the streets here in Manhattan and then was then copied in the outer boroughs. But, uh, you know, the streets, north, south, I'm sorry, the avenues north, south started first, go to 12th and the west. Streets, east to west, started first, go to the 200s at North and Island. But in that grid plan of 1811, um, they actually didn't include a park. And in 1844, he began this kind of movement to create Central Park with this uh, editorial in 1844 and began this movement culminating in the opening of uh, the Frederick Law Olmsted and Calvert Vox Design Central Park in 1858. You should check out my Central Park video. But uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna walk through this park now a little bit. Here you have a statue of Gertrude Stein. Yeah, Gertrude Stein is the, uh, well, she's the one who to coined the term the lost generation. She actually had a salon in like uh, not a salon like hair salon, like a salon like literary and artistic salon in, in Paris. And actually it was where like Pablo Picasso, Scott Fitzgerald, Ernest Hemingway, they would all rub elbows. Very famous uh, 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 artist, writer. And I'm walking next to the Bryant Park Grill, which is a pretty uh, fancy little restaurant. You can come eat here if you want to buy a $25 burger. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't really eat there that often. I have eaten there before, though. Decent food. Uh, so we're walking uh, down to 40th Street, which is the southern border of Bryant Park. See the little map here? Uh, the southern border of Bryant Park. That's where we are. Boop. There's 40th Street. And then we're going to walk around. But uh, the park stretches from 40th Street, goes up to 42nd Street, starts over here at 6th Avenue in the west, and kind of goes to the middle uh, between uh, 6th Avenue and 5th Avenue in the east. Uh, next to us is the uh, New York Public Library, which I'll talk about here in a second. I want to get on this side over here, Stewie, so we can see this. So over here to the right, you have the Great Lawn. Not the, I was going to say the Great Lawn. It's, it's pretty nice. It's not great. The Great Lawn is in Central Park. Uh, but that's the lawn. And you can see they have stage set up. They actually do like, you know, yoga performances. Uh, not performances. Yoga. What do you call that? Yoga practices? I don't know. Yoga things. But they are having like singers and like, you know, Broadway performers and stuff. And then they do movies here in the summer as well, uh, where you can come see all the latest hits. Like... Uh, I don't know, like Spider-Man 13 or whatever they're on, or some reboot of something, I think a reboot of Independence Day or something with Kevin Hart or whatever they're making. Oh, oh, here you go. I'll show you guys this. This is one of my favorite buildings in New York City. Very underrated. So maybe I should put like some kind of like little stamp or something, some like a little graphic to show this. This is the Bryant, well, it's the Bryant Park Hotel, but it's housed in the American Radiator Building. The American Radiator Building was built in 1924, and it was designed by Raymond Hood, who's actually one of the architects of, uh, of uh, Rockefeller Center. Yeah, a pretty famous architect, but it's a really cool building. American Radiator Company was formed with this like conglomeration of all these different radiator companies in the United States, and it was renamed the American Radiator Company in the late 1800s. But the building is supposed to signify like coal burning because of that reason. It's black, and it's got the gold trim. It's got a really cool, like, architectural design too. It's, it's like a mix between Gothic and uh, neo, uh, Art Deco, which was very popular in the late 1920s or early 1930s. So it's just a really, really cool building. One of my favorites. Uh, got my stamp of approval. All right. 
we're walking. So just so you guys know the history of this park, so this park wasn't formally opened as a quote park until 1870 when it was Reservoir Park. It was designated to be a park in 1846. Uh, and the reason was because there was a huge reservoir here where the library is today, uh, where a lot of water was distributed from. I'll talk about that here in a second. But it was named Bryant Park in 1884 to commemorate William Cullen Bryant. Um, and, you know, in the 1930s was also revamped by a man named Robert Moses who revamped a ton of stuff in New York City. One of the most controversial figures in New York City history because he was so powerful and he had so much sway in all the different building decisions and park designs and all that stuff. Uh, also here you have uh, a cool uh, statue there. That's Goethe. Goethe. Uh, that's a little German there. Ich spreche ein bisschen Deutsch. Ich lerne gern Deutsch. But uh, he, uh, he's actually uh, the most famous uh, art, art author, the most famous writer ever out of Germany. He's very famous for penning the uh, epic play uh, Faust, which was about a guy who sold his soul to the devil uh, for, in exchange for worldly pleasures. Uh, really cool uh, uh, book, that uh, play. You know, you, know, you know Faust, right, Stewie? I know Faust. What would you sell your soul for if you could sell your soul for uh, something? Right now, like $500. <laughs> yeah, I'd probably sell my soul for, uh, for an unlimited Metro card for, this, for, the, uh, for the month. But, uh, you know, my soul's not worth anything. <laughs> and also, too, you have the carousel here. We're about to pass by. Carousel's pretty cool. Pretty nice little carousel. You know where a carousel came from, actually, Stewie? This is kind of interesting. A little aside. Uh, carousels actually came from uh, the, well they say, from the Middle East. And during the Crusades, this like idea kind of, kind of bled into Europe. And what it was, was a kind of like, uh, like a training uh, device for knights and warriors to practice their like joust-like movements. Um, and then it became eventually in like the 1800s for children, eventually. But originally it was like, there was no pole at the bottom of each of the horses and they would like fly around and they'd have to like, you know, poke through little holes and stuff. Pretty cool, huh? Cool. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're now we're getting towards Sixth Avenue. And now keep in mind, this park was a horrible place in like the 1970s and 1980s and they made a big push to kind of beautify it. One of the people responsible for this was actually Brooke Astor. Uh, she, she actually gave money uh, to make this a much nicer park around that time. Uh, oh, hey, let's walk this way along with the Rockefeller family. Here you're gonna have, uh, oh, and also too, on 6th Avenue on this way here. So 6th Avenue is also known as Avenue of the Americas. But don't go to New York and ask anyone how to get to the Avenue of the Americas because no one says it, no one calls it that, it's ridiculous. Uh, I've, you know, it's a giveaway that you're a tourist. That and wearing flip-flops around the city, that's a big no-no. Uh, but it's called Avenue of the Americas because Fiorella LaGuardia nicknamed it that in the late 1930s uh, to kind of commemorate the contributions of these Latin American countries. So up 6th Avenue, you have all these statues of different Latin American leaders, like here. So here you have this statue. This is Jose Bonifacio de Andrada e Silva. Thank you very much. A Brazilian guy, he's a father of Brazilian independence, originally from Rio de Janeiro. And uh, yeah, isso é até legal. But uh, he's a pretty cool guy and one of the many Latin American figures on uh, 6th Avenue. So we're walking over here towards this fountain on the other side of me. Look at that, Sleem seamless, Stewie. Look at that, we're pretty good at this, huh? Stewie, you like working for me? You like, you like hanging out and doing these things? Yeah, good time. Stewie and me are good friends, very nice. Nice quality time we're spending. Here, this is the Josephine Shaw Lowell Fountain. Uh, but a cool little fountain. And then you have Le Pain Quotidien. Le Pain Quotidien means the daily bread in French, I believe. But uh, yeah, it's just a chain. Sorry to discount chains like that. I just, I don't know. In New York City, you gotta, you gotta value the small businesses, man. The small businesses are pretty cool. I mean, think about this, about a small business versus a chain. The small businesses' money all kind of goes back into the community, back into the city. The managers are there. The, you know, there's less turnover because people feel a, like a sense of community there. It, it provides a place in the community for people to meet and hang out and exchange ideas. I don't know, man. I, uh, I think we'll miss them once they're, if once they're gone, if we don't protect them. They're very important to the city. Uh, you know, it provides variety and choice. I mean, think about it, these chains, all their money goes straight to the corporate offices. No one feels any affinity for them when they work there. 
very sterile, you know? So hold on to your small businesses. They're very important. Protect them, baby. This is bigger than politics. All right, now we're on 6th Avenue. Speaking of small businesses, there's Whole Foods to my left. You know, small, you know Whole Foods was uh, founded in uh, Austin, Texas, Stewie? I did not know that. You know, they sold, I think it was like two years ago, they sold to Amazon for $13.7 billion. Wow. It's a lot of dough, baby. One day I hope to sell <laughs> Tom DNYC for $13.7 billion. I'll give you half, Stewie. How about that? Awesome. That's not a binding contract, by the way. Hey, check this out. This is Benito Juarez. This is a uh, Mexican figure here on Avenue of the Americas. He was actually the first indigenous president in, uh, in Mexican history in the 1860s, part of the big reform movement there in Mexico to democratize the country. A uh, very important figure. Uh, but uh, yeah, another one of the figures here on Avenue of the Americas, Latin America. I myself have a little Latin American blood. You know, there you go, Nicaragua, baby. <laughs> first gen. Mm. All right. And here we're getting to the corner of 42nd and 6th. This is the kind of northwest corner of the park. And behind me you have the Bank of America Tower. The Bank of America Tower is actually, uh, well, it's 1,200 feet tall, which is pretty tall. It's actually almost as tall as the, uh, as the, uh, the circular thing of the Empire State Building, the little mooring mast. So it's pretty tall, but it's in Midtown rather than on 34th Street where the Empire State Building is, which we'll talk about in a second. So it kind of blends in with all the tall buildings around it. Uh, but cool thing about the Bank of America Tower, uh, aside from the fact that, uh, you know, it's big, is that it's owned by the Durst Corporation, which uh, you know who Robert Durst is, right, Stewie? So Robert Durst was the heir apparent to the Durst Corporation, which is one of the biggest real estate companies in, in uh, New York City. And uh, he murdered a few people. Uh, but he was passed over for that for his younger brother, but he murdered a few people crazy story. Uh, I actually talked about it a little bit in my Times Square video. Sick plug. But uh, there's a really great documentary on it. And uh, yeah, he's, he's completely kind of lost his mind. But in his documentary, he actually kind of admitted to those murders, which he had kind of been acquitted partly of. And then they uh, brought him back to trial because of that documentary. Kind of nuts. Should watch it. All right. Now we're walking it back into the park. There you have the Grace Building right there. That's the Grace Building. That's that like sloped building. Uh, it was built in like the 1970s. Kind of a cool little design. I always wonder that if you got out one of those windows, if you could just like kind of slide down and make it down and you know and save yourself. It's like there's a fire or something. You think you could make it down? Uh, I always wondered that every time I walked by that building. How, I think if you went like to like the eighth floor or something, you just like slid down. Maybe you can make it down. That'd be kind of cool. All right. Deep thoughts by Tom Delgado and Stewieville. Check it out, this is uh, Waffles and Dinges. This is kind of an interesting story. So this, bi this business here was started in 2007. Uh, believe it or not, King Albert of Belgium funded the, the creation of Waffles and Dinges here in the United States because he was kind of worried about the bad rep that waffles were getting here. And Belgian waffles are like supposed to be the most famous in the world. So he funded this business, kind of crazy government of Belgium actually created like a waffles, you know, uh, like ministry to kind of operate this business. Kind of nuts. I think the United States could take a page out of that history instead of like, a, you know, a defense budget where we spend $30,000 on toilets at the Pentagon, maybe we could fund like a, <laughs> a hot dog ministry and, uh, you know, spread some goodwill. <laughs> All right. Too dark, Stewie? No, good enough. Thank you. All right, check it out. Look at this to the left. This is kind of cool. You got the ping pong tables here. People come here during their during their work, uh, their lunch hours and stuff, and they come play ping pong. Kind of nice. I myself not that great at ping pong. All right, we'll keep walking over here. All right, looks like it sounds like someone's warming up over here on stage. Probably you two or something, huh? Over there, you can see a good view. You see the Statue, uh, not the Statue of Liberty, I was gonna say the Statue of Liberty. <clears throat> I'd be a pretty bad tour guide if I called that the Statue of Liberty. Can you see the Empire State Building, Stewie? Yeah, I'll get it in B-roll, it's fine. Okay. So uh, the Empire State Building, really great view here. The Empire State Building was the tallest building in, in, in the United States, actually, until the World Trade Center was finished in the early 70s. 
That thing was finished in 1931 at the beginning of the Great Depression. It was actually developed by a man named John Jacob Raskob and Al Smith, who was actually a former governor of New York. Um, really beautiful Art Deco building, and this is kind of cool. That big circular thing underneath the antenna is about 1,250 feet tall, but it was actually built originally to be a mooring mast for zeppelins, for blimps. They were gonna park blimps up there. That's nuts. They realized that it was a terrible idea because you know, it's really awful and terrible and dangerous and terrible. So they're like, no, we're not gonna do that. So they just kept it there. But it's a pretty, uh, pretty cool little observation deck now. You've probably seen it in tons of movies. Uh, you know, Sleepless in Seattle, huh? Spoiler alert, that's where it ends, yikes. Also too, King Kong. 1933, actually this is kind of cool, in the early 1930s, that building was having a hard time getting finding tenants because it was the beginning of the Great Depression, go figure. Uh, it wasn't until 1933 that people started paying attention to it and that was because of the movie King Kong. In the movie King Kong, he dies on top of the, on top of the building. Did you know that, Stewie? You didn't know that King Kong died falling off the, the Empire State Building? I know he climbed it, I forgot. Holy he Lord, he, he gets shot up by all these like planes and stuff. Uh, sorry for spoiling the movie for you. I know you had that on your Netflix queue, but uh, yeah, he dies falling off the Empire State Building. And people paid attention after that. They like fell in love with the building. They're like, oh, let's open our offices there. So everyone started to kind of fill it up. Uh, kind of cool. In fact, in 1983, on the 50th anniversary of the movie, they actually put a huge inflatable uh, gorilla up there. Kind of funny. Here you have uh, the reading room of, uh, of Brian Park. You can go and read books and stuff. Go and read some good to there's the stage check it out you got all the people getting ready for their thing or whatever i don't know what they're must be uh red hot chili peppers or something huh all right so here you have another statue this right here is william earl dodge william earl dodge was kind of a big deal back in the day you know he was a railway and uh and a mining tycoon he was one of the founders of the YMCA. He was a congressman. He was one of the, the founders of uh, the National Temperance Society, which was a, a society that was for, for the prohibition of alcohol. Uh, more like William Earl No Fun. <laughs> uh, but anyways, he, uh, he, was, he was very, very famous, very popular, and very rich guy in his day. And uh, you know, um, today, tourists and business people and everyone walk right by him and don't know who he is. Which once again proves my point that uh, you know, no matter how hard we try and how much work we do in our day, in 150 years, no one's gonna care. <laughs> and you know, that sounds a little dark, but uh, let's be honest, there's something very liberating in knowing that, you know, life should be taken a little bit less seriously, you know? Just enjoy it, do the things you love, give back what you can, and uh, just be happy about that. All right, some deep thoughts there, huh, Stewie? Deep, getting deep. <laughs> Thanks. All right, but that's uh, the, uh, the lawn here. I was telling you, they do like yoga and stuff here. It's pretty, pretty cool. People come lay out during the summers and stuff. It's kind of empty right now, you know, it's Saturday. It's kind of, kind of chilly. Uh, not chilly, but not super hot, which is nice. Don't have to sweat. Let's walk over to the, uh, one of the highlights of this park. That over there is the public bathroom of Bryant Park. This could very well be one of the nicest public bathrooms in all of New York. Let's just stop and let these people pass. Yeah, sure. <laughs> they were putting the pressure on pretty thick behind us, so let them pass, I guess. They're trying to get to the bathroom, I bet. Let's see, let's show, show them that. Let's get over here on this side with me, Stewie. We can show them that. That's the bathroom. It was built in 1934. <laughs> it's actually a Beaux-Arts building. Uh, oh yeah, she, they were going to the bathroom, look at that. But it's a, it was a Beaux-Arts, Beaux-Arts pretty little building, um, and it was actually refitted to be this fancy bathroom. They play classical music, it's super clean. They have like 3,000 visitors a day sometimes here. It's kind of nuts. Um, but yeah, really, really fancy. It costs like $200,000 a year to like fund, I guess. And it's a private company that, that runs the park. It's called the Bryant Park Corporation. Uh, a lot of these parks are actually taken care of by these private uh, enterprises, public-private, uh, which is a whole other issue, a whole other thing. Um, but this, uh, this thing, pretty, uh, pretty, pretty cool. It was actually spearheaded too and pushed through uh, partly by, um, to be made so nice by uh, Brooke Astor, who I was talking about before. Uh, she said she was walking by the, the, the park on her way to the library because she was one of the trustees and uh, some homeless guy came up to her and freaked her out and she's like, all right, we got to do something. Um, but yeah, pretty nice little, uh, and, you know, here's the thing. I actually read a pamphlet. There's a pamphlet about public bathrooms in New York. There's like 1,160 public bathrooms in all of New York City. 
which is not a lot considering there's 8.5 million people here. 1,161 public bathrooms if you count the actual city of New York as a public bathroom, which many people do. All right, let's keep moving. So this here is the back of the New York Public Library. We just talked about that a little bit ago. Uh, this is all the books being stored underground here. Uh, I talked about that in depth in uh, my Midtown 42nd Street video. You should check that video out. I might have plugged that one already, so ignore it if I did. <laughs> it's hard to keep track, all right? I'm just doing this off the cuff. Okay, this is the Bryant Park Cafe, which is the kind of sister to uh, the Bryant Park Grill, or brother. <laughs> you don't want to alienate anybody, sister or brother. Uh, and here you have the lawn again. In, uh, you know, in 1853, this is where the World's Fair was. And the World's Fair, they built the Crystal Palace here. The Crystal Palace was actually this giant crystal building that was like a big tourist attraction. People came from all over the world to see it. The Ladding Observatory was also built here, which is this 315-foot structure built um, to kind of just be a lookout point. That, that was the biggest building in the entire United States at the time. Uh, and it was actually the uh, inspiration for the Eiffel Tower. Ah, Gustave Eiffel in France. Oh, yeah, that's right. And uh, they both burned down, unfortunately. Uh, but more interesting, coming this way. There. Oh, we gotta navigate through all this. More interesting than that, though, is that at the World's Fair of 1853, there was a man named Elisha Otis who had built a structure to debut his uh, passenger elevator and its braking system. Uh, and people saw it, but for the first time, were like, oh, we can use these elevators for passengers. Oh, and in attendance was a guy named E.B. Howitt, who then installed one of these passenger elevators at his uh, housewares emporium that he built on Broadway down in Soho, the Howitt building, which I talked about in the Soho video. 1857, baby. The building, not my video. <laughs> okay, not that old. But uh, yeah, here's the lawn. And then uh, let's walk over here. And that was all put here because of this park. Once again, the reservoir was put here. Uh, there used to be a huge reservoir here before the, the, the public library. It was knocked down at night. So the, the Croton Aqueduct was finished in 1842, um, and it brought clean drinking water to New York City from the Croton River in Westchester County, 41 miles away, uh, using only gravity. Pretty cool, right? Like gravity brought, you know, like every 13 miles, I'm sorry, every mile it would, it would come down like uh, one foot about all the way until it got here. Pretty amazing, the technology, huh? One of the major technological advances, aqueducts, you know, uh, the printing press, you know, Google Glass, all the big <laughs> technological advances of our time. Uh, so it was built here, the Croton Aqueduct was built here where the library was uh, and was there actually until, uh, until 1900 when it was knocked down because it was, it was uh, no longer needed. And then they built this beautiful library, Beaux-Arts Library, um, but yeah. Uh, the park was a little offshoot of that. Uh, it was actually designated to be a park in 1846, and then, uh, you know, in 1870 it was created as Reservoir Park, and then in 1884 it was renamed Bryant Park. Which brings us right back to good old William Cullen Bryant. William Cullen Bryant, uh, the guy who pushed for Central Park, and uh, we're going to end the tour. I don't know, guys, that was pretty much it. That's Bryant Park. Really, really important park here in, in, uh, in Midtown. This is where the people who work in this neighborhood come. We got all these kids running around me. <laughs> where all the people who, who uh, work in the area, back when people were working in offices, would come and eat lunch and stuff. Very cool place to hang out. Also where tourists who were down in uh, Times Square, which is only an avenue away from us, would come to kind of just take a break from that insanity over there. Uh, but a really important park here in New York where a lot of people don't know a ton about, which is uh, a shame, because it is very important um, to New York and to Midtown. There aren't many parks like this in Midtown. But, uh, you know, uh, Stewie, what do you think, man? Did I forget anything? Am I forget anything? Well, I think uh, we covered it all. How do you feel? Uh, I feel good. You I feel good? About this one, yeah. yeah, I feel good about this one, too. All right, well, that being said, I think I'm pretty much done. Um, if you like the video, please like it. Give it a thumbs up. Super easy. It takes two seconds. Why not? You're going to watch more of these anyway, so why not? But the thing, also subscribe. That's a huge help, guys. I'm trying to grow this channel. And also, please, if you really liked it, help out on the Patreon. That's a huge help. Just take a look at it. Link's in the description. Um, you know, put some extras there. And that's what allows me to do these, baby. Want to keep making them. Uh, but that being said, I don't know what to tell you. I'm just kind of uh, hanging out now. Me and Stu are going to go get some waffles and dingus, or dinges, or whatever you pronounce it. Um, and uh, hang out. I don't know what to tell you, but uh, see you later.